think it's always worth thinking about is there a different agent I can use? Can I think outside the box a little? Just because when I see kidney infection, I think fluoroquinolone, can I think of something else? I looked this up recently and I had a renal abscess and according to a really good pharmacology textbook on antibiotics, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or Bactrim gets into renal abscesses just as effectively as the fluoroquinolones. So why don't I use that drug? And I did, the patient did fine. <laughs> but it takes, it takes thinking outside the box and, and you can't spend all day in mindful thinking in medicine. You have to react fast. We have to have mental cues that lead us to a rapid decision just to get through the day. But sometimes we need to stop and recalibrate our mental cues. That, that's really what antibiotic stewardship is all about, is helping people recalibrate their mental cues and embedding the right pathway. Yes, actually the first person I would advise more is the patient. <laughs> that's who I talk to. I, you know, there's, there's very good data on um, Cipro and prosthetic infections and bone infections. So we use them sometimes long term to deal with osteomyelitis or an infection of a prosthetic joint. And I tell the patient up front, the antibiotic I'm gonna put you on has in some cases caused tendon rupture. So if you even start to get a little bit of twinge of pain behind your heel or in your elbow, you need to stop the drug, you need to come to see your doctor, or you need to just come to the emergency room. Because I think the patient has to know and be on board, and I need to warn them up front. I tell them I'm choosing this drug because I think it's the right drug to help deal with this you know, deep-seated infection that you have, but I want you to be aware of this risk. So now I'm gonna be thinking also if someone has an aneurysm. <laughs> uh, you know, and most patients at some point, most of our older patients have at least had an abdominal ultrasound somewhere or a CAT scan so I can look and check. I might not choose three months of Cipro in those patients. I think stewardship programs need to be aware of this and put it on the radar. The problem is stewardship programs are already really doing what they can. I don't know a stewardship program out there that really likes fluoroquinolones. <laughs> and it's because of the association of those drugs with the C. diff outbreaks. Um, you know, they, they appear to carry a higher risk of subsequent C. diff than some of the other classes of antibiotics. So I think most stewardship programs are really already after the fluoroquinolones. Sorry. This may give them more energy, but I feel like to some extent the stewardship programs are got the message we shouldn't be using a lot of quinolones. It's getting the message to the people who are using them. You know what really needs to happen? It, it just needs to come out of individual decision making and be embedded in the computer pathways. We just, all around I think in healthcare, we need more IT support for it. If your patient's ever been diagnosed with an aneurysm, it should show up in the chart, <laughs> no matter where they go, and you should get a warning if you prescribe a quinolone. And the, and not just one of a thousand warnings, but maybe something that's meaningful that actually helps you make the decision. I don't have this solution to doing that, but I just feel like medical electronic health records are probably a solution in the long run to a lot of our antibiotic stewardship issues. We just have to find ways to build them smarter and make them compatible with workflow and make them not be full of annoying alerts, but set things that help people get through their day. I don't want any more alerts in my <laughs> VA system. <laughs> On the other hand, a helpful thing that just chose a path that was easier, you know, this, this could be built into medical records. You've got an X year old patient that has Y conditions and they've had the following resistant organisms in the past and the antibiotics that they've never shown resistance to or, or have, are likely to have a major side effect from are the following. That would be a smart record. And that would be friendly. It wouldn't be a blocking alert. It'd be like, these are some of the things we would suggest based on the following. Right, and really smart software that gathers more information about the patient. Really, looking at patients' prior cultures is very important. Good research has shown that organisms isolated in the urine, their resistance patterns are going to predict for up to two years, at least that's as long as the study looked out, what resistance patterns are going to show up in the urine subsequently. It may not even be the same organism, but if they were resistant to Cipro two years ago, what they have now is likely to be resistant to Cipro, for example.